What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to find the angles and lengths of a parallelogram, right? So remember, a parallelogram is just a shape with four sides and it has two sets of parallel lines, right? So this side is parallel to this side and this side up here is parallel to this side down here. Okay, now for this problem, you can see we have X, Y, and Z that we're trying to solve for and then we're just given one angle right here that is 62 degrees. Now the thing about parallelograms is that the consecutive angles are supplementary. So first of all, consecutive angles are just angles that are next to each other. So for example, this 62 and this X, all right, these two angles are consecutive angles because they're next to each other. Same thing with this 62 and this Z. These are consecutive angles because they're next to each other. Right? Same thing with, for example, Y and Z. These two are consecutive. And same thing for uh, y and x up here, right? These are also consecutive because they're next to each other. Okay, now the thing about consecutive angles is that they are supplementary, or in other words, they add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so for example, 62 and x, these two should add up to 180 degrees since they're consecutive angles. So if this one's 62 degrees, that means x over here must be 118 degrees degrees. Okay, same thing down here, uh, 62 and Z are consecutive, so those must add up to 180. So those should be, or Z should also be 118 degrees. Now if you notice something, X and Z are the same angle, and that's because they are opposite angles, and opposite angles are always congruent, all right? They're always the same, they're always equal to one another. So if X and Z are opposite angles, and they're equal to each other. That means 62 and Y are also opposite angles and should also be equal to each other, right? So Y should also be 62 degrees. All right, here's the next example. So we're given three angles, uh, 3X plus 10, 8X plus 5, and 5Y. So here we have some consecutive angles, right? And they also have the same variable. So that means if you add this angle, to this angle, those should add up, add, sorry, add up to 180 degrees. So let's do that so we can solve for x. So here we can say that 3x plus 10 uh, plus this one over here, 8x plus 5 is equal to 180, all right? So uh, again, we have just a single variable, just x. So let's combine those. So here we have 3x and 8x, which is 11x. And then here we have 10 and 5, which is 15. And again, that's equal to 180. Here uh, we can subtract, uh, subtract 15 from both sides. So we get 11x is equal to 165. Then again, here we can divide both sides by 11. Divide by 11, those cancel out. So then we get that x is equal to 15. All right, so now that we know what x is equal to, now we can plug it into uh, either one of these. Let's just plug it into uh, this one over here. So here we're gonna have eight times 15, right? Eight times 15 plus five. Now eight times 15 is equal to 120, and 120 plus five is equal to 125, all right? So this angle over here is 125 degrees, okay? Now, to solve for y, we can take the fact that we know opposite angles are equal to each other, right? So we know this angle over here must also be equal to 125 degrees, right? So to solve for y, here we could just say 5y is equal to 125, then divide both sides by 5. So then here we get that y is equal to 25. Boom, all right? So we got x and we got y. All right, here's the next example. So again, we have our parallelogram, and then there's a line basically cut through it, the center of it, and it kind of splits it up into two different triangles, right? Now, one thing I want you to remember is, again, consecutive angles are supplementary. So that means this angle and this angle, when you add them up, they should add up to 180 degrees, okay? It doesn't matter if I cut a line through it like that or draw a line through it like that, okay? This whole angle plus this whole angle is equal to 180 degrees, okay? 
So going back to this problem over here, uh, you can see that this angle, right, the whole angle plus this whole angle, again, are supplementary. They should add up to 180 degrees. So this angle up here is 81 plus 28, and that's equal to 109, okay? So this whole angle right here is 109 degrees, and that's supplementary with this one. So if this is 109, that means this angle down here must be 71 degrees, okay? So this angle over here where the one is, let's just say angle one, is equal to 71 degrees. Okay, so now how can we solve for these other two, two and three? Well, to solve for angle two over here, as you can see, we have a triangle right here. And remember, whenever you add up all the angles inside of any triangle, they should add up to 180 degrees, okay? So we know this angle right here is 81 degrees, right? So 81 plus this angle over here is 71 plus angle two, and we'll just write it like this. Angle two should be equal to 180. Okay, 81 plus 71 is equal to 152. So 152 plus angle two is equal to 180. So then uh, subtracting 152 from both sides, we get that angle two should be equal to 28 degrees, all right? So angle two is equal to 28, or we can write it right here, 28 degrees. Okay, now to solve for angle three, we can use opposite angles. So this angle right here, again, is equal to this opposite angle over here, right? So if this is 28, and we already have 28, that means this 81 would match up with this three, which would be 81 degrees. So angle three is equal to 81 degrees. All right, here's the last example. So as you can see, this parallelogram has two intersecting lines. And when you have two intersecting lines like that, they all intersect at the midpoint, all right? So what that basically does is it cuts each of these lines in half, right? So this distance right here is equal to this distance right here. And this distance right here is equal to this distance right here. So as you can see, we have a bunch of unknown variables, unknown lengths. So this is x, this is 2x minus 8, this is y plus 2, and this is y plus 10. So we can solve for these lengths and these variables by just setting these distances equal to each other. So first of all, we know y plus 10 is equal to 2x minus 8, right? So we know y plus 10 is equal to 2x minus 8. And we also know that x is equal to y plus 2. So we know that x is equal to y plus 2. So as you can see, we have a system of linear equations. So basically, we have two equations and two unknown variables, x and y. Okay, so to solve for these, we need to use either the elimination method or substitution method. And in this case, I'm going to use the substitution method because it sets it up kind of nicely. Because as you can see here, it says that x is equal to y plus 2. Okay, well, if I know what x is equal to, y plus 2, I'm just going to substitute that in for this x right here. So I'm going to plug in a y plus 2 right there for x. So then uh, rewriting this equation on top, we're going to have y plus 10 is equal to 2 times y plus 2 minus 8. All right, so then we can uh, distribute in here, right? So we're going to have y plus 10 is equal to 2y plus 4 minus 8. So then we get y plus 10 is equal to 2y uh, minus 4. Okay, now getting all the y's on one side, uh, here we can subtract y, subtract y. And then here we can add 4, right? Add 4, add 4 to get the numbers on the other side. So then 10 plus 4 is 14. So 14 is equal to 2y minus y, which is just 1y or just simply y, all right? So no, now that we know what y is equal to, now we can plug it into either one of these uh, original equations to find x. So let's plug it into this one since it looks like it's easier to work with, okay? So x is equal to y plus 2, but we know what y is equal to now, right? 14. So here we can say that uh, x is equal to 14 plus 2, which is equal to 16, right? So we get that x is equal to 16. 
All right, cool. So now that we know what y is equal to and what x is equal to, now we can plug them in to these x and y's to find these lengths. Okay, so first of all, we know x is equal to 16. So we know the length right here is equal to 16. Now, we know that this length over here is equal to this length over here. So I don't even need to solve for this one. I can just say that this length represented by y plus 2 is also equal to 16. Okay, and now again, we know what y is equal to. So let's plug it into uh, this one looks pretty easy. So y plus 10 is uh, 14 plus 10, which is equal to 24. So this distance right here is equal to 24. So that means this distance over here, I don't even have to check it, is also equal to 24. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.